Sergeant! Hut! A different world with its own rules. Absolutely no privacy here. Zero tolerance. Prisoners remain in isolation for one week to a month. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily survival of the fittest. In the toughest prisons in the world. Taichung, a mega metropolis in the west of Taiwan. The small island state is considered one of the safest countries in the world. Nevertheless, more people are behind bars here than in much larger countries, such as Germany, Spain, or Italy. The reason? Drugs. Huge quantities of drugs enter the country every year via the country's ports. In 2022 alone, police confiscated some 10 tons of heroin, cocaine, and amphetamines. The Chinese drug mafia uses the island state for transit. Anyone caught with drugs ends up here, in Taichung Prison. It's a high-security bunker with space for nearly 5,000 criminals. Escape from here is impossible. Monotony, confinement, and around-the-clock video surveillance everywhere dictate the lives of the inmates. Tai Chung Prison is one of the world's toughest prisons. Seven o'clock in the morning is when the head guard, Li Shi Chang, begins his shift. He has been providing security in Taiwan's largest prison for 30 years. As every morning, I hope that today will be a quiet day. And I hope that there will be no problems and no security incidents. After all, the country's most dangerous criminals are imprisoned here. Over a hundred life sentences alone and more than a thousand prisoners are serving sentences of 20 years or more. The security measures are particularly tight. This is now the second security check. This consists of a passage detector, which spots weapons, metal and cell phones, as well as a further check by security officers. Only those who are absolutely clean are allowed into the prison. The guards work in three shifts. During the day shift, 210 guards are responsible for the current 4,500 prisoners. Attention! Roll call! The guards are now deployed to the various cell blocks. The prison has a total of six cell blocks. Each block is a small prison of its own, which the inmates hardly ever leave. In Unit Chao, there are almost 500 prisoners taking part in special rehabilitation programs. Next to it, Unit I, the largest block in the mega prison with 1,100 inmates. And Unit Yi, for prisoners with medium to long sentences. Unit Ching is a block where mainly drug criminals are held. The prison's isolation wing is also located here. Unit Ren, with 1,000 prisoners, the second largest block. Unit Chung, a block exclusively for HIV-infected prisoners. Next to it is the prison hospital. 
At the other end of the 200,000 square meter mega prison is the kitchen. 15,000 meals are prepared here daily. Everyday life in Taiwan's toughest prison is strictly timed. Yuna Ching is the drug wing. 715 sharp. The prisoners are given their breakfast. Soy milk and rice rolls. A nutritious and above all, an expensive meal. Food is eaten in the cell, on the floor. There is no table. Eight prisoners are housed here in just under 20 square meters. One of them is Huang, prisoner 5523, sentenced to 11 years for amphetamine trafficking. You get used to cramped conditions. Sometimes the cells are even more crowded. Then it gets really uncomfortable, but it's okay as it is now. On average, each prisoner has just two square meters of space. There are beds only for those at the top of the cell hierarchy. The rest have to sleep on mats on the floor. Even with windows and a fan, the air in the cells is stifling and stuffy. I hope to get out early. I'll find out next month. After breakfast, cleaning is compulsory. This is to prevent pests and diseases from spreading among the prisoners. The cell's toilet also serves as a sink, shower, and bathroom for the men. Huang and his cellmates stock up on water. This is because the water is turned on only twice a day for two hours. At the beginning, it's extremely difficult to learn the ropes. You have to adapt. That took a long time for me. I compare life here to that of a soldier. It's a bit like the military. You just work. But the worst thing is, is that you have no privacy. Not only are the prisoners in close quarters with their cellmates around the clock, but they're also permanently exposed to the watchful eye of the guards. Each cell is under constant camera surveillance. There is no place here where you are not observed. That is sometimes very difficult, especially when I'm in a bad mood or sad. Writing helps me. I write letters to my family, my brother, and my girlfriend, too. The orange vest means Huang is cell boss. This helps him to earn the guard's favor, but it doesn't make him any friends. Nearly half of all prisoners here have been convicted of drug trafficking or possession. This also affects the work of head guard Li Shi Zhang. In contrast to the past, the prisoners have changed. They're more educated and intelligent and behave accordingly. But that doesn't make them harmless. They're still criminals, but in a different way, rather sneaky. For the guards, this means always being vigilant. There are no special events planned for today. Please take good care of yourself, make sure you have your baton with you, and don't hesitate to use it in an emergency. Everything all right? Have a good day. The 600 prisoners in the block are about to go to work. Tension among the guards is rising. The most dangerous moment is now, when the prisoners go to work. We all have to be in position and remain vigilant. The prisoners have a lot of time to think during the night. You never know what they'll be like in the morning. It's always possible that someone will suddenly become mentally unstable and flip out. That's why we have to be particularly vigilant now. So there's no incident when the cells are all open. To keep the situation under control, the guards let the prisoners out of the cells one by one, and only in small groups. Each of the prison's six blocks is designed in such a way that prisoners do not have to leave it. The workplaces, known as factories, are located within the blocks. 
work is compulsory for everyone in Taichung prison. Gluing bags and plugging cables is supposed to give the prisoners a daily structure and prepare them for a regular life after prison. They are paid just $30 a month. When the prisoners work in the factories, we rarely have problems. The inmates usually behave well, especially towards me. After all, I'm the one who makes sure they're doing well. I help them if they have problems. However, they need to behave respectfully. If they don't, they face the consequences. The prison works with what is known as progressive correctional treatment. This means that prisoners are divided into four levels. The better a prisoner behaves, the higher their level. And this determines, for example, how many packs of cigarettes a prisoner can buy and how often he is allowed to have visitors. The most important thing, however, is that the length of imprisonment is reduced with each level obtained. For most prisoners, this is a good reason to cause as little trouble as possible. The laws in Taiwan are strict. There are no exceptions. Prisoner 1971 also had to learn this. He used to be a high-ranking military officer. Now he is serving five years in prison. How you fare here always depends on your performance and on yourself. I just hope that I can spend time with my family again soon. I'm already 70 years old and my wife is also in her 60s. I long to be by her side again. I want to travel with my wife as soon as possible. He doesn't want to talk about why he is here. He doesn't want to give his name either. He is too ashamed for being in prison. At the beginning, I was terrified of prison. I had imagined it would be much worse. When I arrived here, it wasn't like what I thought. There was nothing bad, no abuse or anything. You're just locked up. He still has around three years to go before he, with good guidance, can be with his family again. Those who behave impeccably can apply for a place in Unit Chao. Instead of doing dull and monotonous work, prisoners here take part in art programs. One of them is 53-year-old Lai. He used to have his own nightclub. He also dealt drugs there until the police caught him and arrested him. He has been in Taichung prison for nine years, but previously did time in another prison. <laughs> I've always loved painting, and then I took the chance and applied for this program. And since I have a talent for it, they took me on. I like being here in the workshop. I enjoy it, and I worked hard for the entrance test. For him, working in the art workshop is a kind of escape from harsh reality. When I paint, I can forget. It's very liberating. I dive into another world and forget where I am at the moment. Prisoners are in the workshop from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Here, too, everything is designed so that they don't have to leave the room for anything. Laundry, toilets, showers, everything is done on site under the watchful eye of the cameras and guards, of course. They aim to identify problems before a situation has a chance to escalate. A good relationship with the prisoners is important to us. We try to get to know them as well as possible and understand how they think, how they feel. That way we can better recognize when something is wrong or something is bothering them. Each month, we also have one-to-one -one meetings with them. There, they can tell us everything they don't want others to hear. Like informing on other inmates and thereby earn points. But these preventive measures don't always help. 
In 2015, there was a hostage situation in another Taiwanese prison that ended in six deaths. Since then, guards have been even more cautious here, too. Each of us has a baton on our person. We use it to protect ourselves, and if a person behaves violently, we also have pepper spray. In an emergency, there's also an alarm button at the back. We set off the alarm and go outside and lock the door behind us. Anyone who causes trouble ends up here in the isolation wing. This is one of the isolation cells. Depending on what the prisoners have done, they stay here for between a week and one month. One window, one toilet, and otherwise bare, tiled walls. That's what awaits all troublemakers in prison. And of course, the cells here are also under round-the-clock camera surveillance. As you can see up there, we give the prisoners tasks to do during their time in isolation. They are given books to read. That calms them down. They can sit down or lie down and read. It's a very effective treatment. Most prisoners only end up here once. Meanwhile, the prison kitchen is working at full speed to feed the four and a half thousand inmates. There is even an in-house bakery. Jobs here are in high demand. Here, prisoners receive up to 300 euros a month, 10 times as much as the factory workers. Inmate Huang has been working in the bakery for four years and has now worked his way up to foreman. I make sure everyone is working properly. We have a set number of baked goods we need to meet every day. If my instructions are not followed, I go to our supervisor and he takes care of it. It's my job to check on the others. But if I happen to miss something, someone else sees it, they tell me. And then I report it. That's how the system works here. From drug dealer to informer for the guards, it's a life Huang would never have dreamt of in the past. So, basically, I used to do jobs for the Mafia all the time. It wasn't difficult to get in, but I didn't do anything bad. I didn't kill anyone or anything like that. It was more along the lines of collecting debts or protection money. You know, I was young and I hung out with them, I drove their cars and stuff. But Huang has now said goodbye to his old life or so he claims. I'm not really worried about slipping back into the scene. It's the first time I've ended up in prison and they've locked me up for such a long time. I've come to appreciate the value of freedom. I definitely don't want to end up here again. He is currently waiting for the decision on whether he will be released early for good behavior. The chances are 50-50. One floor below, in the kitchen, lunch is being prepared. Every day, 15,000 meals are prepared here from 1.7 tons of food. The processes in the large kitchen are strictly regulated. Every meal has to taste exactly the same. Otherwise, it would quickly lead to disputes among the prisoners. The prison spends around $2 per inmate per day on food. The meals are kept fairly simple. The coveted kitchen jobs are only available to those who are not serving time for a violent crime and who have done absolutely nothing wrong in prison. We're in a prison and these knives present a big risk. We keep them in a separate room so that no other prisoners are around when we open the cupboard. Otherwise, someone could try to take one of the knives and attack other inmates with it. 
To prevent such situations, prisoners are not allowed to bring the knives to the workstations themselves. This task is always carried out by one of the guards. The system has been successful. There has yet to be a safety incident in the kitchen here. Just before 12, lunch is ready. The workers now deliver it to the various blocks. There are no dining halls. The prisoners eat at their workstations, as to Lai and the others in the art workshop. Nobody has to go hungry here. However, the question of taste elicits a collective laugh. <laughs> we have no choice. We have to eat what we're given. If I could choose, I'd like a burger, fried chicken, or something else Western. <laughs> no wonder, after more than 10 years in prison. The other prisoners seem to view things similarly. Almost half of the food is left over. If you're lucky, you have friends or relatives nearby who regularly bring food from outside. Relatives are allowed to drop off two kilograms of food per day at the visitor center. Many families take advantage of this opportunity. On average, a further 800 kilograms of food are collected every day. Time and again, however, friends or family try to smuggle illegal items into prison this way. Before the food reaches the prisoners, then Eun Sen and his colleagues search it thoroughly. We look for prohibited items, such as drugs, metal objects, really anything made of metal, including keys or lighters. All types of powder are also particularly suspicious, as these are usually drugs. Cakes or rolls are particularly suitable for hiding things in. Today, for example, I found this one pill in a cookie. We confiscated it immediately, of course. We still have to find out exactly what it is. Every fine means trouble, both for the prisoner and the person who delivered the parcel. Everyone who drops something off must leave their address, telephone number and name, so we know exactly who has dropped off the items. If we find something somewhere, the person will be held accountable. This is a serious offence. In the worst case scenario, this also means prison. Officers then send the controlled food to the prisoners. Prisoners who have no family or friends nearby can buy supplies in the prison store. Here they can order almost anything, from toiletries, fruit, and writing materials, to ready-made meals and sweets. In here, everyone has to buy their own things. If someone has no money at all, they can apply for support. But many people are too ashamed to even do that. A pack of toilet paper costs 50 cents. Toothpaste, one dollar. A pack of apples, on the other hand, costs seven dollars. Most people, therefore, limit themselves to the bare essentials. Lai is one of the lucky ones who can order regularly from the store. My family sent me money. My family sends me a fixed amount of 5,000 yuan every month. And I can use the 5,000 yuan for my daily needs. Sometimes I also save for more expensive things. It amounts to the equivalent of $150. It's a lot of money in prison. That's why Lai often orders things for his cellmates, like toothpaste.
early afternoon. Head guard Li Shi Zheng is on patrol in his block. He makes the rounds twice a day, always at different times. The inmates should never be sure of their fate. The count comes to 104 prisoners. We count the prisoners several times a day. This is very important so that we can keep an overview. That way we can see immediately if someone is missing and we can then react quickly. And to deal with an escape attempt within the prison walls, if possible. Li Shi Chung seizes the moment for another inspection. The prisoner's cigarettes are locked away in a cupboard and are only handed out on request. Sometimes the prisoners take the boxes and hide things in them. For example, lighters, blades, or medication. This time, he found nothing. The head guard is satisfied. Everything is in order here. At least for the moment. The next inspection round will follow in two hours. The prison mainly relies on cameras to monitor the inmates. Over a thousand of them are distributed around the grounds, in the factories, and in the cells. The guards can access all cameras from the monitoring center. Tong Shao is the prison's head of security. We can see all areas of the prison from here, every camera. We have extra screens for particularly vulnerable areas. Our main task is to use video surveillance to identify unusual situations. If we notice something suspicious, we immediately send the people there to deal with it. The same applies here. Recognize situations and defuse them before disaster strikes. We have a mixture of video surveillance, surveillance by the guards, and fairly thick walls and bars. It's almost insurmountable. The prisoners see all this and realize that escape is actually pointless, and at the latest, it becomes very clear once they're standing in front of the outer wall. The prison wall is 1.2 kilometers long and surrounds the entire compound. In front of it is a massive wire fence and the five-meter-wide so-called no-man's land. If someone enters no-man's land, an alarm is immediately triggered. Should someone manage to bypass this alarm, the outer wall is waiting for them. It's seven meters high, with several rows of barbed wire fed with high-voltage current. So far, no one has managed to get to the other side. Late afternoon. Dinner is served at 4 p.m. It's the last meal of the day for the prisoners. After eating, they have to return to their cramped cells. The cell and the workshop here are actually two different worlds. In the cell, you can do practically nothing except rest and sleep. Here, on the other hand, 
There's plenty of space. We can be creative and even do sports. That's why none of the men are in a particular hurry. They take their time tidying up their things. Shortly before five, guard Huang collects the tools. When we hand out the knives, we count the blades. And when we return them, there have to be just as many as when we handed them out. If one of the blades is missing, we confront the prisoner. If he claims to not know where it is, we look for it until it turns up. And until then, no one leaves the room. 5 p.m. It's time for cell lockup. The prisoners are counted once again. To get prisoners safely back to their cells, Huang Chen Chen receives help from two colleagues. You can go outside. Guards randomly search some of the prisoners. After all, with a little creativity, there are lots of things in the art workshop that could easily be used to make a weapon. Passing through the corridors of the block towards the cells. Why and the other prisoners have not been out in the open for a minute today, and they won't be able to either. They will spend the next 15 hours in their cells. Lai shares an eight square meter cell with three other prisoners. Just enough space for the toilet and for the men to lie down. A tiny television and a few books are the only distraction from harsh reality. In the beginning, I thought a lot about my old life outside and about my family. I brooded about my future. I've been here for nine years now, and I've stopped thinking too much. Otherwise, I just go crazy. As long as I don't think about it, it's bearable. Prison changes you. I've learned how to behave in here. Every minute of the day. His most valuable possession is a photo album with pictures of family and friends. And a photo of himself from before prison is a kind of reminder of how things used to be. Actually, I only have good ratings from the wardens, and I've now been promoted to level two. That means I'm allowed to have visitors at least twice a week. Once a month, my little brother brings our mother here. She's old now. Otherwise, I get a lot of visits from friends. His greatest wish is to get out of here while his mother is still alive. Attention. Ten fifty six. Here. Fifty one sixty one. Here. Twenty sixty. Here. Twenty forty one. Here. The guards check once again to make sure every prisoner is really in his cell. Then it's time for Wang Chen Chen and his colleagues to call it a day. The night shift takes over. Silence returns to Taiwan's toughest prison. 
A few kilometers further into the city, however, nightlife is just getting started. This is exactly where many of the prisoners used to sell their drugs. While people celebrate in the streets of Taichung, the prison seems deserted. Lai has been in prison the longest and therefore has the privilege of one of the two beds. It's his own little kingdom. The newcomers, on the other hand, have to sleep on the floor. Time passes very slowly in the cell. We try to distract ourselves by reading and watching TV. It's a distraction from the thoughts of what his life would be like now if the police hadn't caught him. I really don't sleep very well here, but I'm used to it. The guards count the prisoners one last time for the day. The lights are switched off at 9 p.m at least some of them. It is never completely dark in the cells. The inmates have to sleep with the lights on. The reason? The surveillance cameras. In the monitoring center, special concentration is required during the night. This is when the risk of an escape is at its highest. Three guards keep an eye on the screens at the same time. However, head of security, Tong Shao, does not rely entirely on technology. He personally checks the situation in each block several times a night. Everything's fine, sir. Nothing unusual. Any incidents? No. Now, after 10 p.m., it's bedtime. The prisoners are no longer allowed to walk around, watch TV, or read. As you can see, on the monitors, most people are already asleep. We make sure that everything is really quiet, and people aren't moving around too much. If we do notice anything, our colleagues immediately go to the cell in question to sort it out, and restore the calm. For the prisoners, this means total surveillance, even while they sleep. Tong walks from block to block. His tour lasts half an hour. Everything is fine nothing out of the ordinary. But you can never assume it will stay that way. That's why I'm doing another round in a few hours to make sure there are no incidents. For this night at least, it stays that way. A few days later, today is a special day for inmate Lai and the others from his work group. The weekly yard walk is about to begin. Today, they will be out in the open for the first time in a week and feel the sun on their skin. But first, it's off to the workshop. Lai is simply happy to be out of his cell. It feels good to be out here. I'm immediately in a much better mood, simply because I can be in a different space. I'm almost, how shall I put it, cheerful. The mere thought of going outside 
lifts the spirits of all the prisoners. After lunch, they finally get to go out into the yard. Once a week, each working group is allowed a yard walk. This means that exactly once a week, they have the opportunity to be out in the open air and feel the warmth of the sun's rays. Most of them use the time to at least briefly exercise under the watchful eyes of the guards and, of course, the cameras. Security Chief Tong Shao takes advantage of the prisoner's absence to conduct a cell search. We are mainly looking for objects that could compromise or endanger our safety. For example, homemade weapons with which the prisoners could injure themselves, other prisoners, or us. The guards search several cells every day. They're only selected shortly beforehand. That way, no guard can warn the inmates. Please check your equipment. You can start now. The guards are searching a total of 10 cells today. There are no taboos. Every corner of the cell is thoroughly searched. After all, the safety of the guards is also at stake. Some of the prisoners take toothbrushes, for example, and sharpen them. This turns them into a dangerous weapon. And that's exactly the kind of thing we expect to find today. Our main goal is to find these things to ensure everyone's safety. In addition to homemade weapons, they also search for medicines, drugs, cigarettes, and cell phones. To do this, they also look in rather unsavory places. I have to think from the prisoner's perspective. It's not easy to say where I would hide my things if I were locked up in here. I think I would use the toilet area. Some of them might think that this area is too disgusting and that we might not look too hard there. But these are the exact places we need to look extra hard. This time, the search turns up empty. The bathroom is clean, but his colleague does discover something, aluminum foil. This doesn't belong in a cell. Even if aluminum foil looks harmless, with the foil and a battery, you could easily start a fire. After half an hour, the search is over. Please finish up. Take all the found items to the main room. The hall is not exactly large. In addition to the aluminum foil, the guards also found a rubber band, a wooden board, and batteries. There was no trace of homemade weapons. There are very few prohibited items found in this prison. That's because we do these searches every day. Today, it was relatively boring, but this boring job is our only way of ensuring security and order in our prison. The owners of the items will be dealt with later. They will be downgraded in the rating system. Meanwhile, the prisoners enjoy the rare opportunity to take part in sport activities in the open air. I enjoy being out in the sun, running, doing sport, sweating, sweating a lot. I can totally relax in the process. And every time he does, he realizes how prison has changed his life. I didn't used to think about what I was doing. I was young and I didn't really care about anything. 
I had no sense of responsibility towards my family. When I went to prison, that all changed. I was pretty shocked. I've changed a lot over the course of my time here. I've become a different person, so to speak. After just 40 minutes, the time in the yard is over. It's back to the workshop. Lai's life will look like this for at least another two years. Only then will he have the opportunity to be released on parole early. My plan is to hold an exhibition while I'm still in prison so that people can get to know me and I can open my own small studio later on. For the last two years, I've been working on paintings that are suitable for an exhibition, paintings that I would like to exhibit later in my own studio. I'm trying to prepare myself as well as possible for the future. His chances of making his dream come true are not all bad. He has already won several prizes with his paintings. And Huang already has plans for the time after prison. I do think I have a good chance of finding my way again once I'm out of here. I've been working here for more than four years and I've gained a lot of experience. I've learned many different things here. My plan is to open my own small bakery at home and then market my products online. With a bit of luck, he will be allowed out in just a few months. While inmates dream of a life of freedom, Head of security Tom would not trade his job for anything. He wants to run a prison himself one day. Until then, he will continue to provide security in Taichung Prison, one of the world's toughest prisons.